God uses ordinary people. He chooses people just like me and you who are willing to do as he commands. God uses people that will give him all. No matter how small your all may seem to you, because little becomes much as you place it in the master's hand. Just ordinary Just like me and you who are willing to do as he commands. God uses his people that will give him all. No matter how small your all may seem. As you place it in, in the master's hand. Just like that little lad who gave Jesus all he had. How the multitude was fed with the fish and loaves of bread. What you have may not seem like much, but when you yield it, it turns to the master's loving plan. Yes, then you'll understand how your life could never be the same. Good morning. I am Robert Phillips, and I serve in the diocese as the canon for leadership development and congregational care. 
I welcome you on behalf of Marianne Edgar Buddy, Bishop of Washington, and Randy Hollerith, Dean of the Washington National Cathedral, to this ordination service to the Sacred Order of Deacons. We are truly honored and blessed by both your physical and virtual presence. We give special thanks to the cathedral staff of worship, events, programs, administration, and facilities, for without their untiring efforts, this service could not have taken place. I would also like to recognize and give thanks to Sue Von Ratzenkrantz, Archdeacon of the Diocese, for her service of instruction, guidance, and support to the nine ordinands who will take their vows as deacons in the diocese during this service. For our virtual audience, please pray with gusto and enthusiasm so that we might feel your presence in this place during this sacred and solemn occasion. For those of you gathered physically in this space, please be aware of a few program notes. Please wear your mask and keep socially distant at all times. Please do not sing during the playing of music. Hum if the spirit moves you, but please do not sing due to the aerosol nature of the coronavirus. Please refrain from any photography during the service. A professional photographer has been designated to take pictures throughout the service. These pictures will be available online immediately following the service. Also, official photographs of the ordinance will be taken immediately following the service. So please do not come forward after the service for personal pictures due to the need for social distance. Please follow the directions of the ushers at the time of communion and please eat the bread after you return to your seat. Everyone present is invited to partake in communion. At the conclusion of the service, please follow the direction of the ushers and exit through the north and south aisles, not the center aisle. Further, at the conclusion of the service, please leave the cathedral for it needs to be reset and cleaned. Bathrooms are available downstairs. Accessible bathrooms are available outside the Lincoln Bay beside the door through which you entered. Again, welcome to this sacred space and sacred service. Please allow your spirit to connect with the Holy Spirit in this space and share in the celebration and joy of this occasion as nine ordinands officially say yes to God's calling on their lives as deacons in Christ's church. So now, let us worship the Lord.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation now to be seated. Have they been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe their manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? As you are able, I invite those in the congregation gathered here to stand. 
and I am speaking as well to the congregation gathered virtually. Dear friends in Christ, you know the responsibility and the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting these persons for ordination to the sacred order of deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Antonio, Ethan, Michael, Adrian, Linda, Sally, Abele, Mary, and Sarah be ordained as deacons? Will you uphold them in this ministry? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. For all members of your church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord For Michael, our presiding bishop, Marianne, our bishop, Chilton, our assisting bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear. For Antonio, Ethan, Michael, Adrian, Linda, Sally, Ebele, Mary, Sarah, chosen deacons in your church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our For their families and the members of their households, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one, as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord 
for those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. for a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, Paul, Samuel, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We give you thanks, O Lord our God, for your goodness in bestowing upon this church the gift of the Episcopate. And we pray that, joined together in unity with our bishops and nourished by your holy sacraments, we may proclaim the gospel of redemption with apostolic zeal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak. 
for I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a child, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hands and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of the altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Lectura del libro de los Hechos, en el capítulo 6, versículo del 2 al 7. Entonces, los dos se convocaron a todos los discípulos y les dijeron, No está bien que desatendamos la proclamación de la palabra de Dios por atender a las mesas. Así que, hermanos, busquen entre todos ustedes a siete varones de buen testimonio que estén llenos del Espíritu Santo 
y de sabiduría para que se encarguen de este trabajo. Así nosotros podremos continuar orando y proclamando la palabra. Esta propuesta fue del agrado de todos los creyentes y eligieron a Esteban, que era un varón lleno de fe y del Espíritu Santo, y a Felipe, Prócoro, Nicanor, Timón, Parmenas y Nicolás, un prosélito de Antioquía. Luego los llevaron ante los apóstoles y oraron por ellos y les impusieron las manos conforme crecía el conocimiento de la palabra del Señor, se multiplicaba también el número de los discípulos en Jerusalén. Y aún muchos de los sacerdotes llegaron a creer. The word of the Lord. Yes, God will be. 
Santo Evangelio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo según Lucas. Los discípulos tuvieron una discusión en cuanto a quién de ellos sería el mayor. Pero Jesús les dijo, los reyes de las naciones se enseñorean de ellas y los que tienen autoridad sobre ellas son llamados benefactores. Pero entre ustedes no debe ser así, sino que el mayor entre ustedes tiene que hacerse como el menor y el que manda tiene que actuar como el que sirve. Porque ¿quién es mayor? ¿El que se sienta a la mesa o el que sirve? ¿Acaso no es el que se sienta a la mesa? Sin embargo, yo estoy entre ustedes como el que sirve. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the God of justice and joy. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of the courageous and faithful nine presented for ordination as deacons today, I simply want to acknowledge and thank all of you who have been their guides, their mentors, their exhorters, encouragers, and burden bearers on this journey, their journey to this moment. They, they wouldn't be here without you. And on behalf of the extended community surrounding you, faithful and courageous nine, and I include myself among them, we want to thank you. We saw, we saw you, we saw how hard you worked, how you persevered, how enthusiastically you learned, how you fiercely reached beyond yourselves, how you strive to hold this vocation in conversation with the rest of your life and with those you love, how you responded to serve so many. If your journey ended today, your example would be an inspiration, and yet, thank God, we know that this day also marks a beginning, a beginning for which we also give thanks. I was blessed to spend a couple of hours with you yesterday, all of you, taking in the magnitude of this moment and the context of, in which it's happening. I loved listening to how you looked back on where you've been and how you cast your imaginative gaze toward the people you will become in the days and years ahead, how you were able to name for yourselves what you bring to this call the particular attributes and qualities, skills that are your gifts. You speak with clarity about those strengths and also of your vulnerabilities, which in the economy of grace are needed just as much. And God, who has known you as he knew Jeremiah from the womb, knows everything about you and has called you in your you-ness.
Years ago, I was at a conference with about 40 other people, lay and ordained. We had all been chosen as potential faculty for a national wellness program for clergy, and this conference was intended both for our benefit and also as part of the evaluation process. And we would find out at the end if we were to be invited to join this faculty. So there was a bit of performance anxiety in all of us, certainly in me. But three things happened to me at that conference that I'd like to share with you. First, we were divided into small groups, as is typical in conferences like this, so that we might have some in-depth conversations about our lives, let our hair down a bit, and, and also to engage, to engage in greater depth the material that was being presented to us. And during one of those sessions, I said something that deeply offended another member of the group. I didn't realize it right away, but it soon became apparent that this person was wounded and angry. I apologized, but the person I offended wouldn't accept my apology. And the others in the group who were witness to this breach between us tried to be helpful, but to no avail. The person I offended didn't want to reconcile with me. She was clear, actually, that our relationship wasn't that important to her. And from that moment on, for the rest of the conference, she refused to acknowledge my presence. So, as you can imagine, I dreaded our small group time, which we had daily, as I kept trying in vain to seek reconciliation with someone who wanted nothing to do with me. Finally, one of the others in the group took me aside and said, Marianne, I'm here to tell you that you can let this go. There's nothing more you can do right now, so let it go. Focus on what you're here to learn and let, and let her do the same. It was and remains one of the most freeing insights ever given to me, which is why I share it with you. Sometimes, sometimes, after you've done everything you can think of to say or do in a painful situation to make it better, sometimes it doesn't get better. And sometimes you can let that go and move on. Life is too short, and I think sometimes we hold ourselves back in the sense of guilt for the things that we cannot fix, when the more faithful thing to do is actually surrender that. Surrender that person and surrender that part of our lives to God and move on. Maybe not forever. You know, life has a way of bringing people back into our lives. As it turned out, I was convinced this was just blowing my shot to be on the faculty. But as it turned out, we were both invited to be part of the group. We never served on the same team, but we kept bumping into each other. And after about three years, the dynamic between us softened. We were never best friends. But the residue from that encounter eventually dissipated. It doesn't always happen, but it can. Second thing that happened at the conference was in my relationship with God. We were given this large block of time to reflect and discern the next steps in our life and vocation. And, after, and this was after we had spent considerable time looking back on what had beckoned us into ministry in the first place. And I had been ordained for 10, 12 years at that point. And I had traveled some distance from my original sense of call. And I was not at peace about that distance. See, I'd come into ordained ministry convinced that my call was to serve on the margins of church and society. I had worked among homeless people and immigrants from Central America alongside, along the Arizona border. I had lived in Honduras in an Episcopal home for abandoned children, and I had every intention of going back there. 
or working in a similar setting here. There I was, 10, 12 years after my ordination, and I was now a rector of a church in the Midwest and a mother of two sons, and we owned a house and two cars. I had this closet full of clothes. I wasn't at the margins. I was right in the center of everything. Everything about this society, I was right smack in the middle of it. And what's more, I chose to be there. I was reasonably effective at my work, and I wanted our kids to have a stable, grounded childhood. I wanted all that. But sitting in my prayer, looking back on who I was when I answered the call, what I felt in that moment was just the deepest of shame. And I had this sense that if Jesus had said to me what he had told the young rich man who asked him what he needed to do to inherit eternal life, you remember what he said? Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. I, I wasn't sure I could do it. I wanted to be the kind of person who would say, without reservation, Lord, I'll do anything you ask. But inside, I wondered. So as I sat there in what was then now a moment of confession, what I experienced was this overwhelming acceptance. I didn't feel judged. I felt understood. And what's more, in the midst of that, washing over, I could name for myself an emerging sense of call that was rooted in my strengths and vulnerabilities and my place in life. And I realized that God was taking into account everything about me and saying, I actually need you here. Will you go, will you go here? And I said, yes. I'm persuaded that God has called each one of you as you are for who you are, not to be someone you're not, and that God will call upon you and your strengths and shine forth in your vulnerabilities and teach you through your failures what you need to know. And the third thing that happened, <laughs> that I was given this great vision for my life, right, that I mistakenly thought was going to be realized like within a year. And I could not have been more wrong about everything regarding timing. As my life took one expected turn after the other, some of it really painful and disappointing, to the point where I couldn't even bring myself to look down at that piece of paper where I had written this vision, down, vision on, because it just seemed like wishful dreaming. And only 20 years later did what I write down at that conference begin to make some sense. And now, maybe nine years on the other side of it, I still have those moments when the messiness of life just kind of washes over. And I've come to realize that you don't get that kind of vocational clarity every day. You get it once in a while to set your life in a certain way. And then you slog through just like everybody else. Um, and I share all of this with you because I want to underscore what we talked about yesterday, again, that the gifts and the strengths you bring are important. They're part of who you are and that God knows that about you. Also that you don't have all the time in the world, so don't try to do everything. Focus on those strengths and passions. Learn what you can about what you're called to do and then go about doing it and let go of the things that you can't change and the struggles that don't belong to you anymore. And finally, remember, and I know this about some of your stories, that God's time is not ours. And what we experience as setbacks or disappointments or interruptions or failures may be woven into a wider tapestry that we won't see for a very long time. Because in the end, in the end, it's not about us at all. It's about God and Jesus' way in the world who walked this earth as one who served and who calls us all, and you in particular, to this vocation of deacon in his name, to be sustained by his grace and mercy and to point toward him. Thank you.
for saying yes. Amen. all who feel so moved to stand as you are able and affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may now be seated. Now, friends, um, you need to do this. You invite you to stand. My sisters and brothers, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servanthood directly under your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As a deacon in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures, to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments. And you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My sisters, my brothers, do you believe that you are truly called to God and his church, to the life and work of a deacon? Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? Will you be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? Will you be faithful in prayer? Yes. 
and in the reading and study of Holy Scriptures. Will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to all people? Will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of the Lord Christ? May the Lord, by his grace, uphold you in the service he lays upon you. Amen. Congregation, you may I invite you to stand as you are able. God, most merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. We praise you that you have highly exalted him and made him Lord of all, and that through him we know that whoever would be great must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries in your church and for calling these your servants to the order of deacons. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Antonio, 
Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Make him, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let his life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through him many may come to know you and love you. As your son came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Ethan. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Make him, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let his life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through him others may come to know you and love you. As your son came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God now and forever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Michael. Fill him with grace and power and make him a deacon in your church. Make him, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let his life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through him many may come to know you and love you, as your son came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. You know, I think you can be seated if you'd like to be seated. You're welcome to stay standing, but if you'd like to be seated, you know. Hmm? Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Adrian. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many will come to know you and love you. As your son came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory with him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Linda. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her 
many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, give your Holy Spirit to Sally. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to obey and observe the disciplines of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her, many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory with him who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, give your Holy Spirit to Evole. Fill her with grace and power. Make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her, many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, give your Holy Spirit to Mary. Make her a deacon in your church. Fill her with grace and power. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her, Many may come to know you and love you. As your son came to be, not to be served, but to serve, let this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory with him who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Sarah. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the disciplines of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandment that through her, many may come to know you and love you. As your son came, not to be served, but to serve, 
May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory with him, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to be vested according to the sacred order of deacons. Antonio, receive this Bible as a sign of your authority to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Ethan, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Michael, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Adrian, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. These are heavy Bibles, y'all. Linda, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Sally, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Abele, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Mary, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacraments. Sarah, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority entrusted to you to proclaim the gospel and to assist in the ministrations of the Holy Sacrament. I wonder if you might turn and face the congregation gathered here. I invite the rest of you to stand and to welcome the newest deacons in the Episcopal Church. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a socially distanced peace with one another. seated. You all can go be seated too, or come. No? You need to move. <laughs> there you go. All right. 
Well, thank you all of you for uh, being part of this service, those of you here in the cathedral physically and those of you joining, um, the, joining us from where you are. It's a great privilege and I so look forward to seeing each of these uh, deacons in their ministries fully expressed now in the authority that you, the church, have seen and entrusted to them through this service and through the power of the Spirit working in and among all of us. We will now celebrate the Holy Sacrament of Communion with one another, um, and it is a, a different form of practice given the restrictions necessarily placed upon us. I would simply ask that should you wish to come forward and receive, that you follow the instructions of the ushers, that you stay in your family groups, and that you bring your uh, communion wafer back to your seat uh, before you partake. Um, there is a way for us to financially support these deacons in their new life in ministry through the offering that we would normally take in this place, and I trust that there are instructions about that in your bulletins, and I uh, would ask that you be generous because every, every gift we give to these deacons is going to find its way um, into the lives of someone who really needs it, and so in advance of that holy exchange, I thank you for your generosity. And so let us all continue, continue to walk in love as Christ loves and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God. not be hardened to those living on the margin if there is room at the table for everyone this is where it all begins this is how we gather in if there is room at the table for everyone Long we have wandered, burden and undone, but there is room at the table for everyone. Let us sing the new world in. This is how it all begins. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for all and all. Too small, there is room at the table for everyone. There is enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. No matter who you are, and no matter where you're from, there is room at the table for everyone and now we can be the beloved community because there is room at the table for everyone there is room for us all and no gift is too small there is room at the table for everyone Everyone, there's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel to all nations and promised to be with them even to the end of the age. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of, your, of, your calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world in him. You have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and the blood of his covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where our patrons, the apostles Peter, Paul, with Samuel, all your saints, that we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him, with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Praying together. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with your holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. And we pray that Antonio, Ethan, Michael, Adrian, Linda, Sally, Abele, Mary, and Sarah may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with them may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
Play and make a good 